Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Dada's Show coming to you straight from the Boma Hotel. I'm your host, Ashiko Mbune. The Dada's Show is an inclusion and equality program that focuses on issues that matter to women, especially their impacts and the implications, especially in light of the 2022 general elections. We encourage you at home to take part on today's conversation and any other day's conversation. We want to hear your feedback, your comments, your questions, and your queries. You can reach us on our social media platforms at uh, the Dada's KBC. Of course, we always look forward to to hearing from you now no health without mental health is a mantra that is taking root globally which means that people are finally recognizing that psychological well-being is as much of importance as our physical well-being now societal expectations and norms have effectively mounted politics to seem like a man's game. The different standards that Kenyans hold for their female and the male counterparts uh, perpetuate the environment to be rather masculine. Now, with that withstanding, we have seen an upsurge of female participation, especially in the recently concluded uh, party nominations. But also on the rise are the cases of stigmatizations and stereotyping, which seek to stop these very women. Cases of psychological abuse and physical abuse are on the rise when it comes to the female uh, aspirants and participants, anyone who stands in the way, of, uh, uh, in the way and wanting to seek a political uh, office. Now the question today is what needs to be done? What can we do? How do we become our sister's keepers? And for the people who are already, for the women who are already sitting in office, how do you go about protecting your mental health? How do you go about protecting yourself and your sanity during this particularly crucial period in Kenya's history? Uh, we took some comments from some of the aspiring women on how they do that uh, in the next feature. Take a look. Globally, a lot of effort has been made to improve gender equality in political, social, and economic spheres. However, in Kenya, discrimination against women continues to be a major problem. Women were not really anywhere seen in leadership. And politically, even women themselves thought it, is a male, it was a male thing. So when I came in as a, a young woman, because I was really a young woman, it was like, how? She can't. And then you can imagine it is a village whereby we have a lot of issues of uh, lack of education, uh, lack of, uh, the, the, the incomes are very low, so people are poor. And uh, also expectations would have been very high. But then the women also didn't believe in themselves that a woman can really uh, be a leader, their leader. Political representation is highly biased as it favors men, and historically, women who seek leadership positions in Kenyan politics have often been undermined by attacks on their character, family, and sexuality. The other one, of course, was intimidation, harassment. You know, those areas, by then, they were really ghetto areas. So uh, young men would be given beer, Others uh, cheap beer, others uh, even bangi to come and harass me, uh, you know, harass my meetings. So you'd really feel insecure. Sometimes I look back and wonder, as a young lady of about 30, 35, uh, how I managed to go up to the, uh, to the level of uh, the ballot. But uh, I was there and I am happy that I started the journey. And I believe this year I am about to finish the journey or to fulfill the dream that I had since uh, since I was born, I can say that. Women go through a lot of challenges, eh? <coughs> especially in uh, this election in here. And I can say that uh, the worst happens in women after losing the elections. They go there to depression. Reason. They have two lives. They have to balance their family, and they have to balance their financial cost because of politics. I, I, I know some of, majority of women go the worst. They even separate with the families. Rizzo, how do you feel when I finance my wife to go for a campaign and he lost? And we maybe you have sold our property. I banked all my interest in her and then she fails. 
I think the probability will happen is separation. Others go brutality because when you are doing campaign nominations, they are very tough, very competitive. They are erected maybe on hospital beds. Imagine when he loses, he dies. So I, I think that's my opinion and uh, it's very tough for women of this country, especially Kenyan politics. With this in mind, being that most politicians go to the ballot with the hope of winning, some aren't usually ready to receive the bad news. Hence, the effects especially on their mental health, if not properly dealt with, can be dire. Even if the world really rejected me, even if I had so many beatings outside, I had really a home to go back to whereby it was acceptable, where it was, it was serene, it was peaceful, and this gave me a lot of encouragement. The other one is financial, because you know after the campaigns you are left with nothing. You are actually left broke. So if you don't have a strong family to hold you back, or to, to, to have a fallback, your mental status would not be the same. I remember in 2013, when I lost the nomination for for the women rep in Kajiado County. I stayed in the house for four months without getting out. I didn't want to hear any noise. I just wanted to sleep. I knew my bank accounts had nothing. I still had a family to feed, but thank God uh, that uh, the, the, the family was able to, to hold me, to encourage me that all is not lost. And also, as I said, my Christian faith, I had my bishops, my pastors, my fellow women whom we pray with, who also gave me a lot of encouragement and stood with me in prayers. It is good for any woman aspirant who loses in an election to be optimistic that there is always a next time and they can still be influential without being politicians. That in case I don't get it, what do I do? Because it is not actually uh, almost guaranteed that you are going to, to get it. Mm. Because the seat only belongs to one person. So, one. so today I'm joined by a group of very brave and inspiring women who against all odds and all stereotypes, against all myths, they still dared to pursue their political aspirations. Thank you for joining me, ladies. On my left, I have Scholastica Wanjiko Alube, yeah. and she was vying for Starehe MCA. Yeah. Next to her, I have Joy Modoni, who is the MCA aspirant, Comarok Ward. And of course, sitting on our panel uh, is Madam Shamita uh, Omote, who is a counseling psychologist. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me on the Dada's show. I would also like Thank to you. acknowledge my fantastic audience. I am honored that each and every one of you took your time to sit and uh, chat with me today. So I'm going to start off with Madam Omote. Um, for our viewers back at home, we hear mental health, this mental health, that, and there are people who sit down and think that perhaps it's a fad, you know, perhaps it is just a gimmick for people trying to get attention or people for being lazy. Kindly expound what we mean when we talk about mental health. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. Um, as you have said, I'm Shamita Omote, a counseling psychologist. Uh, I will say that uh, mental health has not been very prominent. When we talk about mental health, it has not taken a center stage in uh, many places because it has never been uh, an issue. But mental health is an issue by itself. It's a problem. And uh, after COVID, before COVID, it was there. But after COVID, it's more, you can see that people are there are a lot of issues on mental health right now. And what happens is when um, uh, with, uh, I think we are talking about women in politics. Yes. And um, women are in dire need of help right now. Men also are, but women are more in need because you see, politics is basically a very masculine, uh, uh, I can say it's more of a man's world. It's not a women's world. But I can say that women have participated in politics for ages. It's not today. 
It is only that they have never been uh, 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 particularly in Kenya. Women are in real different place uh, where uh, politics are concerned. And so now when we see women in politics, there is a lot of stigma yeah, and a lot of stress and lot of uh, women are in lot of issues. Yeah. And you can see that when women say that I want to want to be part of the poll, even the community itself do not want to identify with that women. In case a woman loses in election, that woman goes through a lot of stigmatization, there is a lot of anxiety, there is a lot of depression, there is a lot of stress, particularly stress. I would, I would emphasize on stress because there is a lot of stress. You see, you are going out, you are coming back in the night, you are mostly with men counterparts, you see. And so, as your question uh, you had asked that, what happens like women in politics, they go through a lot of challenges and harassments and things like that. So, definitely women have to overcome those things and also keep themselves healthy because if women are not healthy because physical health is as important as mental health. So, mental health is all about mental well-being, you see. If my well-being is physically I am not well, same way mentally if I am not well, what will happen? Uh, we won't be able to stand a chance with our men. So, I hope I have answered you. Yes, you have. Uh, so, now in light of what um, Madam uh, Shamita has said, uh, I'd like to start off with Scholastica Wanjiko Alube. Uh, did you always have political aspiration and what has your journey been like? Uh, I've always had a political aspiration ever since uh, I became 18 years old <laughs> because uh, in my childhood time uh, we've been always uh, in political um, journey through our area which is uh, Ziwani Kariako Ward and uh, that made me feel like uh, one day I would like to become a leader in my community. So my aspiration started when I was still young. Yeah. So what has your journey been like? Uh, my journey in politics has not been very easy as a woman because it's always hard for a woman um, to acquire a lot of things in politics. But um, at least I've learned a lot from other women when I was young. I tried to learn from other women too in politics and I came to realize that it's not that hard as long as you know how to express yourself and you know how to talk to people and you know how to engage with voters and uh, things flows anyway. Yeah. Mm. I'm very happy for you. Madam Modoni, in light of the recently concluded uh, party nominations, first of all, how did you fare, if you're comfortable sharing, and what are some of the challenges that you experienced? Um, uh, according to these 2022 nominations for under, under my party, my party clearly opened it for all to participate. Any voter of Komarok was allowed to participate in the nomination. Personally, before I had seen that as positive because I have a lot of friends across all, pa all, all parties and that's some who didn't have the opportunity to register as party members. So for me, it was good until the day when it reached to nomination day, when other people, comp our competitors from other parties came in and uh, gave out a lot of money, funded people to come and vote for the weakest of all. So that's how it ended up. Uh, I thought I was pre fully prepared until then. That's when you realize uh, your opponents can also come and mess up your nominations, thinking that maybe uh, you're yet to meet them in the main election. They came in the nomination and they nominated th that person whom they didn't see as a, as an, as a co uh, competent person to participate in the main election. So, and that's the person who won. To me, it was quite challenging. And as uh, Madame has expressed, a lot of stress followed later on. And this is not the first time I'm vying. I vied in 2017 as well, and another party, but that one I went straight to the ballot. So I had not experienced nomination experience before. I had not known how it goes about nominations, but this time I really experienced nomination. It's really, really tough. It's not an easy journey. You go through a certain place, especially in certain areas. You go somewhere, you meet friends, you ask them for their votes, a person like me who has been doing community work for so long, I'm not new in Komarok. People knew me very well. But after you're there, another person comes in and give out money. And that's the person they come and nominate later on. Mm -hmm. It was very, very hectic and very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So what what tool does do these particular challenges have um, on your interactions day to day? What toll do they take on on you? Uh, ch main challenges that they bring mostly is uh, there's too much in politics. There's too much lies. That's what I, I realized. You come across friends, you come across your neighbors, you come across families, people who are very close to you, trying to express yourself, and they'll tell you, we don't need your manifesto joy. We know you, you know your capability. But in the long run, what happens? They will come and vote for the person they wish to vote for. They have already made their decisions. 24 hour to nomination day, that's when everything changed. People voted for the person who bribed them. And uh, it was a very, very, very hectic journey because given that we started this uh, campaign since last year, around September, personally I was working at an office of uh, government, so I had no right to do a lot of uh, campaign during that time until I resigned. So September, come September, come, come October, that's when I started my campaign. It was quite a bit late, but in the long run, people decided to vote for the person who was giving them much more when it comes to the pocket, fundraising for them. When it comes to people, maybe somebody has passed on, the person will come and bring out the uh, most money. When it comes to Chama, when it comes to, uh, they're called the Matangas and so forth. So those people who participated in such are the ones who got the majority of their votes. That's mm -hmm. what, that was the biggest challenge, financially challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's where most women most women get a lot of challenges. When you compare men who come to vie and women who vie, most of the time it's always men who are financially okay. Mm -hmm. When you compare many areas, like now, my whole constituency, we have five words. Only five women vied. But when you look at the number of men, they are uncountable. We were over 30 aspirants in Komarok ward alone, but women are only two out of that. That's a very, very big challenge when it comes to politics. Yeah, that's, that's rather unfortunate. Uh, back to you, Madam Shamita. She's talked about the lies and the deceit. What kind of tool do, does that play on somebody's mental health, you know? Because she's talking about lies and people coming to tell her and build her up and tell her, you're going to get this, you're going to get this. And on the D-Day, <laughs> people change their mind. What kind of impact does that have on somebody's mental health? Okay, thank you. I heard her, I heard her also. You see, uh, women are like breaking the glass ceiling, okay? Because this glass ceiling, uh, I think you know what is glass ceiling, we are breaking that, the stereotypes rather, mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, what is happening is when somebody is buying, there is a lot of vulnerability. Women go through a lot of marginalized and they are vulnerable, they are undermine they have even forget about voting and uh, i mean uh, let's look at the campaign come to the campaign she's talking of campaign when she goes to places uh, mm -hmm. people okay people do know that women are uh, will deliver better but still because we stay in that male dominated society end of the day as as she has rightly pointed men have more money than women so, end of the day, if you don't have that money, you, you say that I have good points, I'm going to deliver, still money, because our Kenya is, is run by money, you yeah. see. Even for 50 shilling, people will run. So, the lady who is vying for that election, you see, she is in a place, she's in a very tight place. She's very vulnerable. She has a lot of, um, she has been undermined. Ladies are very much undermined. Forget about even election, even in your home, you will see a man is telling you what to do and what not to do constantly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what happens when you come into the public, into the limelight? So there is a lot of um, anxiety because what's going to happen in this 24 hours time? Because I back of the mind, I know that somebody has more money or somebody is there to give that, even if that guy has no money, the party is giving that money. So. Uh, the, that is one of the thing that is very, uh, is, is, is really a place where women go through a lot of challenges and there are a lot of underlying factors, you know, because women have to overcome and have that confidence. Like she said, I go through it and I have 
learn the you have to learn the rope rather I should say you have to really learn the rope how to compete with men and how to still be there and not give up you understand and we give up we don't give up women don't give up but we are pulled back is the other way around we don't give up like um, uh, as I am hearing from uh, our lady aspirants and our lady politicians, I am also very politically bent because my mom came from a political background from India where I am basically from, from the east not the west. So there also I used to see my mom was a congress lady. I used to, this is from generations, in fact when she called me I was happy because I thought I will bring my mom into it. <laughs> <laughs> by talking to these young ladies who are, yeah, because she was a treasurer for Congress. You know, the, our Congress press, uh, Prime Minister was Indira Gandhi. I'm talking of some 70s, yeah. yeah. Same thing. She will come in the night and people will come to my father and say, why is this, why is your wife coming in the night? But what will she do? Yes, because she has gone so far, like she has said, she is going far. And when she comes, uh, maybe the, the wheel is gone or the car has a problem or the, we started late, rain was in between, you know, like so many things. So there are so many factors, there are so many challenges. But what I will tell the lady uh, politicians here that don't give up and you must have that esteem, that self-esteem, you know. You are mm -hmm. not doing it for yourself, you are doing for the community, yeah. the society. Mm -hmm. And our society needs to evolve, mm -hmm. you know. It's only so much patriarchal, it's good. But what about the women? Because we are the backbone of our society and our community. So women go through a lot of challenges, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of anxiety, and particularly anxiety level, yeah, at this point, mm -hmm. at this election time, as the time is coming nearer and nearer. So I will, I mean, suggest, advise, or give my opinion that don't give up, stress will be there. Challenges will be there, but you must have that self-confidence and I'll give some coping skill also in the end, how you can get out of those things, yeah, so that you can look forward to a better Kenya, because we need women in, yeah. in, our, in our leadership, in our politics, in our policy making. If there's somebody at home right now watching, mm -hmm. and like I said, we're having an upsurge of female participation, which is very, very encouraging. Mm -hmm. So if there's a lady who is 26 year old, 27 years old, unmarried, mm -hmm. but she wants to vie for um, political office, mm -hmm. be it whatever level, be, no, no, you know, MCA, uh, represent, whatever, what advice would you give her? Uh, I would advise them, uh, politics is a very good journey to endure. And uh, being a lady, it's not that easy, but uh, you need a lot of courage and wisdom uh, out there because uh, we always think that women are the majority voters, but uh, this time around I saw that things were a bit difficult. Uh, like in my area, most of the women that voted me in 2017, they didn't come out to vote me again. So I saw that uh, we had a lot of male voters. It's like there's this vibe that uh, women have more votes and uh, women vote mostly. So it's like them too, they have come out to vote themselves, to support their own. So I think the two-third gender had made them to raise the eyebrows. Yeah? So they feel that uh, we'll be left out with these women. If you give them per per permission to go ahead, we might be left behind. So with the ladies out there, young ladies, I would, like, I would just like to advise them that uh, they should not uh, lose hope. They should try their best. Uh, politics is not a bad thing, as they normally say out there. It's a bad, uh, it's a, um, you know, they normally have that game. Yeah, it's a dirty game. It's not. Uh, wise, once you are wise and once you're smart, uh, you're good to go. Keep on trying. I'll keep on trying too. This is my second term, and I'll still go in 2027. Madam Momote, there's something that you mentioned earlier about your mother actually also being involved in politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been thinking about it and I wonder what kind of impact did that have to the rest of the family? You understand? Because she's a very key person in the family. Mm -hmm. And I know very many women are experiencing that because their mothers, their daughters, their wives, their girlfriends. What kind of impact did it have in your family as the kids? I remember my mom will never give up in something. When he starts something, she will make sure that 
she has actualized it. And uh, I, there are so many things, but I'll just talk about this one, the actualization. You see, as women, many times we give up and we are unable to actualize. Self actual she said something called belief. It's called self-belief. If you believe in yourself and you are confident about yourself, you can do anything. I mean, sky is not even a limit. limit. Yeah. yeah. So my mom uh, implanted in me, you see, even if you look at my marriage, you see that Omote name is not my name. It's a married name. Yeah. And uh, when I met my husband in university, he was uh, in, in Bombay, in, uh, I thought, why not? Why not marry somebody else? Why marry our own and do something? So it inspired me to meet many other people in life. She was a great inspiration. She never had any stigmas and things like that. And I think I learned a lot from her. And as women, we have many things to offer. Yeah. We are very broad minded. Okay, there are women who are narrow minded, but I'll say as women, we are very different mm -hmm. and we are unique people. You see, we wear many hats. We are mother, we are sister, we are daughter in law, we are daughter. Maybe we are a preacher or maybe we are in civil society. Maybe you are a politician. I'm a psychologist. You, are a, you work for the media. So we have many things we can do. And we know women are multitasking, by the way. Yeah. It? So it is uh, for me, as I was growing, I saw my mom. Yeah. I learned not ever to give up. And I believed in myself. It's called perception. What perception you have about yourself is what you will take ahead. If you feel that, you know, many people say that, oh, I failed. In my clinic, people come. I have an outpatient clinic in Rongai. And uh, they say, you know, I failed. It is not a failure. It's a setback. Mm -hmm. Setback can happen for anybody. Yeah. It's not a woman thing. It's a man, woman, anybody can have a setback. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then they, they highlight on our setbacks. I, I don't like calling it failure. I call it setback. Because we all will have setback. But how to overcome it and go ahead in life is what I learned from my mom, by the way. And she was a very strong leader. She, did, she had women projects and things like that. And as uh, my sister was talking here, because this is Dada's program, so my sister yeah, yeah. was talking. I also uh, I do many community work, like teenage, uh, teenage, uh, mother, uh, teenage mothers. I'm a Rotarian, by the way. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I was wearing my pin. Yeah, yeah. So I do a lot of teenage mothers project. Yeah, and you have to empower the ladies, you know, because though we have to also empower our sons and boys, but if we don't empower our ladies, because la ladies, uh, girls and ladies and young women, they are the the main, uh, they are the source of everything. We are the source of everything, you know. All that is happening in this world. Women, you will see, women are the one who starts, even procreation is done by women, by the way. It's not a man. Of course, nowadays things are changing, but I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is, we are the forerunner, you know. And so I learned a lot, and I learned to never give up. My perception about myself changed. I believed more in myself, and I'm always positive. That one thing that I must tell you. Even when you fail, don't say it's failure. It's a setback. It's a setback. And don't give up. Try, try. I like the biography of Abraham Lincoln. He gave so many years he tried for that presidency. So never give up. Keep trying. One day you will be heard. Amen. Oh, Thank you. That is such a powerful takeaway that Dr. Omote got from her mother who was um, a politician for, for lack of a better word. Yes. And I hope that every aspiring politician, wherever they are, when they go back home and they look at their children or their nephews or their nieces or even the members of their constituents, mm -hmm. when they look at them, they will see some form of, you know, they will be looked up as inspiration because as you've seen, this has been generation and generation of impact. We're going to take a short break and then when we come back, we're going to dive into the question and answer session. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Welcome back. At this point, I'd like to invite questions and comments from uh, my wonderful, very diverse looking uh, audience. I believe we are starting off with uh, Joshua. Joshua, karibu sana to the dadas. You are a friend of dadas. 
Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Joshua. I'm a student at UON. Uh, my question is to the two uh, politicians in the panel. Um, I wanted to ask, in your own personal view, how can men be more supportive of ladies in politics? Because you have been in the arena. And uh, one thing I noticed as a young man is um, masculinity nowadays has become very toxic amongst young men. Mm -hmm. And it worries me where we are going. So I'd l just like to know your thoughts and how you think we could be more helpful as men. My name is Vivian Ta. I share the experience of having you know, been a political aspirant. I, I ran in Langata. Um, and I, 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 having gone through the experience, I know how tough Mchujo is, you know, going through the nomination is really tough. But my question is, of course, to the two ladies who've been in the political arena. Uh, what are some of the psychological uh, abuses you, you had to endure and, uh, during, during your experience? And how have you managed to, to deal with it or overcome it? Because in my experience, it's one of the salient things, uh, but very challenging. You know, it's d psychological abuse is not the same as physical, where someone physically beats you, but it still, it still cuts deep. Mm -hmm. So maybe just share your experience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vivian. What can men do to support women, especially the ones who are aspiring? Um, I would like the question to be taken by, by the way, who, whoever f sees and feels fit. Joy, we can start with you. When you come across people, a person who is a, a woman, and she is asking for your support, if you don't see that person being supported by a woman, don't see as if it's uh, something that is, this, th this lady maybe may not have uh, the goodwill of the people, just because she's not being supported by fellow women. Listen to that person. If your vision and her vision goes by the same, support that person. Those are the only two things I'll say. Thank you. Thank you. Joy Scholastica? Uh, I would really love women in Kenya to support women because we are the future. I believe that. And uh, I believe that when you support a woman, you support the entire community. And not only a community, the whole world. So when it comes to a woman uh, in campaigns, especially in campaigns, most of us, we are not financially fit. And uh, I would like even the government to come up with a docket whereby they can be supporting women with government funds, if possible. Uh, because before we used to have uh, NGOs that used to support women, mm -hmm. but uh, we came across and saw that they have cut their support because of, I don't know, unknown issues that uh, maybe I wouldn't like to mention them here. But mm -hmm. uh, Kenyan men, especially Kenyan men, uh, they have the ideology that uh, when a woman is vying, anavai tu kwa sababu labda kuna kitu anataka ukombele. No, please believe in us and support us in all ways that you can. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I hope, Joshua, that has answered your question. And even for the people at home, let us have the spirit of inclusion, as Joy said. You know, this is, this is everybody's right. It's everybody's uh, birthright to vie for political seat. So let us stop owning politics and say that politics is a man's game. It should be everybody's game. Uh, so that's a call to action for the men. Uh, you should also vote, as, per, as according to what she's mentioned, vote, vote a vision. Don't vote gender. Vote a vision. If somebody has a vision that abides by what you believe in, then by all means go for that. And of course, finally, you know, to curb everything, all the issues that women are going through from our male counterparts, our fathers, our brothers, our husbands, our sons, our nephews, believe in us. You know, believe in us. The same way we can take care of a household is the same way we can take care of the country. Okay, so Scholastica and Joy, we're going to move on to the next question from Vivian, which of course was, what are some of the psychological abuses? She did uh, mention, no, she did bring to light that there's a difference between physical and psychological, but both of them cut deep. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the psychological abuses that you have experienced if you're comfortable to share? So someone watching can know that, hi, yeah, that, that was actually abuse, you know, so that we can call call to action what it is and how did you manage to overcome them? Vivian, I'll answer your question. Uh, um, especially for me, uh, I've vied two times, yeah? 2017 and 2022. Um, 2017, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I was cyberbullied, but not that much. But I overcame it too, because I'm a tough woman. 
and I don't take nonsense. Why? So whoever talks about me, whatever you speak about me, I'll show you that I'm strong and I'll continue doing what I'm doing so that you'll be ashamed. When I was 25 years old, when I buy last time, I was only 25 years old. I remember by then, I didn't want a lot of questions. I didn't, because I was ask, being asked some questions that I didn't want to answer. Because whenever I answered, I say, maybe I'm single, I don't have a child. The facial expression of those people who surrounded me was changing, as if they expected uh, something else. So I remember one day I decided to rush to town and I looked for a very expensive ring, very beautiful and expensive ring. Next time when you see me, don't ask me a question. When you see the ring, you won't ask me if I'm married or not. You already see I'm engaged. And I made sure the pictures that I uh, posted all over, uh, Komarok, all of them had that picture of I having a, a ring. Come 2027, 20, 2022, I didn't care. As you can see, I don't have a ring. Yes, I'm not engaged. And it doesn't matter if I'm engaged or not. What I believe in myself, what I believe that I can do for Komarok people is I who believe. It doesn't matter whether I have someone or not. That vision is in me. It doesn't, it doesn't mean I have to have somebody to make sure it comes to pass. It doesn't mean. I have been doing community work, as I said, for Komarok people for so long. I can tell I'm an associate of uh, Kenya Power, K KPLC. When it comes to street lighting in uh, the area of Komarok, you'll go there and see a lot has been done there because I live there. I have associated myself with Koma Kenya, K Kenya Power through Mwangaza Mtani project to ensure street lighting has been done so that we can cut down the insecurity that has been happening for the last seven years there. When you go there, you're going to hear the impact the street lighting project has have had in Komarok plus Kayole. And I can tell you for sure, I've, I'm the one who has done that. I, in conjunction with the Kenya Power, it didn't mean that I needed somebody next to me for that to be, mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. So as well, when it comes to the MCA position, I don't need to have a partner with me for that to happen. Another challenge, not having a kid. Oh my God, I don't know what a kid brings to the community. When they see a kid, if they see more potential in you or what. But I have a lot of children in Komarok. Every single day, I can another main challenge I must share. Personally, um, uh, I, I suffer from uh, epilepsy since the year 2000 and 2008, oh, sorry, 1998, sorry. Since 1998, so I usually take medication. When a woman supports a man for uh, a certain position in politics, there's always a perspective people have about you. Maybe there's something you're getting from that man. And most of the time, they usually think about uh, sex. So I remember one day, somebody decided to talk about me on uh, Facebook because I was defending somebody for a position of MP, the current MP in my area. So somebody came to my uh, Facebook and posted on my timeline saying that uh, we understand you that uh, that boss of yours is the one who usually sponsor you for the medication of uh, epilepsy. So we, we, won't, we won't judge you, Ashley. Continue doing that so that you may be able to survive. I don't know how many people pass through such. More so if it comes from somebody you know. It comes worse. It better be a stranger. But if it can come from somebody you know, the, the worse. So, Sometimes saying we try to kujia kuwa vitu angumu pole pole, atuna kujia kujizoesha na society. Even right now, as we speak, it's already how many weeks? Three weeks since we finished our nominations. But our business are still going left, right, and centre everywhere. Because if you associate yourself with somebody or a certain party or defend somebody, uh, they are going to say, "Oh, mekimbi uko tunelewa ni biashara mekimbi." Even if you defend somebody based on that person's percep uh, perce uh, perception, if you believe in that person, given that a uh, track record is, can speak loud, they'll still judge you harshly. And that's the community. Thank you. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you so much for having me. My name is Peris Wangoi Gashomo, an aspirant, uh, UDA, Clay City Ward. 
Clay City is in the larger Kasarani constituency, and uh, it was my first time to go for this political position. And I chose specifically UDA uh, party because I believed in their ideologies. And uh, as a student of economics, I believe that the model that the party presented resonated with what I believe can make a difference in my community. I'm a community leader, mobilizer, and also a church leader. My experience is a whole book. I think I need to write a book because it was dramatic, it was interesting, something good and something bad. Uh, when I uh, launched myself into the field of politics, uh, the first shock, first of all, in our area, I would divide it into two because we have the upper part of uh, Clay City where majority of the residents and the electorate, they are employees. And uh, the other side, we have a mixture of employees and also a small and medium uh, kind of uh, business enterprises. Uh, so I discovered that as a woman, the first thing that was a shock to me is that in the area, the upper part of Clay City, I could freely do my campaigns alone. I could just walk, walk alone, whether it is during the day or at night. But the lower part of Clay City, I needed to be escorted, not by women, but by men, because I was not sure about the security. So as a woman, to begin with, I was disadvantaged because you know you cannot walk with a team of five men and at the end of the day, you send them home. So you need to dig into your pocket to pay these people. I can strictly say and confidently say that the system that we have around politics is anti-women. Mm. And women, we need to come together and yeah. support ourselves. And I'm happy that our brother here is asking on how men can support us. I have been telling and empowering women that physically we may be uh, not as strong as men, but mentally and emotionally and intellectually, sometimes you are even stronger. Mm. And this is what uh, leadership is all about. Mm. Daniel, uh, my question would be that uh, we always talk about uh, Kenya being a society, and we have this framework and infrastructure supporting it here. Yeah? But now, uh, what's the framework, and how can you set the framework for, so that Kenya as a society d goes further ahead in this issue of mental health and women in politics? Because we have seen many European countries have had female presidents, and you don't see anyone fighting. In fact, people vote, come in attendance and vote. These ladies in high numbers that you even wonder were there even male candidates in the first place. Yeah? So how can we set it so that Kenya, the Kenya of the future, because we always talk about the future, yeah? how is it that we can set it so that women come into politics more? And maybe even one day we have a woman president, who knows? Yeah? And mentally, how can we also set the entire society into thinking of this as the future, not as something which is like a myth? It has been mentioned earlier, women tend to give up easily because of lack of self-belief. Having that in mind, what motivates you to get back on your feet and do what you do in your line of work? My name is Jambi Gaido from Masinde Moliro University as well. My question goes to Daktari. So the aspirants, they are psychologically prepared that they might win or lose. But we find that there's denial when some lose, they have, they have that denial. So how do they deal with that? And also for the women aspirants, you said that the, the impact is trickled down to the, the families. So how do you protect, especially the children, how do you protect them uh, mentally? Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you, those were some fantastic questions. I believe we will start with Madame Omote for the questions that were directed to you. A lot of civic education needs to be done. You see, there was a time when, which she was, I think, talking about. I had a friend somewhere, I'll not say where, but they were the main funders of uh, this civic education. Bible says that, uh, okay, I'm a Christian, I'm from Sitam, so I will say that um, because of lack of knowledge, my people is going, people will perish. So, you see, this issue of uh, women. Uh, not really, okay, they are coming now. Actually, in 2022, we are seeing many women are coming out. 
and we have heard her story, Pole Sana, for your mom and all that you went through. Uh, th that's, a, that's somebody who is very serious, yeah? somebody who wants to do something for the community and the society she lives in. Uh, we must uh, work towards a, a way out or a, or a way forward to see that women when they come to politics is nothing new, you see. It is just like how men come into politics and then those policies need to be changed, you understand. The problem is the policy makers because they feel uh, in some country as he was in, Euro in some European countries, uh, even in my country, we had Indian, uh, in India women prime minister, Indira Gandhi, go and just Google, she has been there I think for 20 years. Sri Lanka had a women, now Bangladesh has got a women uh, president. Yeah. Uh, even Pakistan had a women prime minister. Asia has many women uh, prime ministers and president. Yeah? So the problem here in Africa or mostly, not really Africa, Liberia had a women president. Yes. Yeah? Mm. But I think in, uh, in Kenya or in East Africa, the patriarch, the, the, not only the patriarchal society, we can't blame, even us as women, mm -hmm. sorry to bring it out now, yeah? uh, women are the enemy of a women. Let's bring it that way, okay? If we women can understand that, that we need help, because women need help, women need each other, then what will happen? Women will be, should be educated, they should be told that you need, I mean, why we are voting for women. Now those structures should be put in places. And women can vote another woman. Like right now, I don't, okay, I'm not supposed to name the person. You already know what is happening. A certain lady has been backed. Eh, to be a running mate. Already there is fight. Yeah? And we are trying to say, no, we don't need this one. We need another man. Why do we need another man? Already men are there. Why mm. not a woman? We need a woman president. We need women in policies. Like these committees and councils and every place. Yeah. There should be a man and there should be a woman. I believe uh, my take-up was the fact that we talked about we need to start vying for leadership positions, yes. even from the smallest level, mm. you know, from the from exactly. the churches anymore, because we cannot expect to be given a seat at the table when we have not started from. So charity begins at home. I also like the fact that the civic aid education, once we start talking about gender parity from a young age in school, in primary school, then these kids are going to grow up knowing that there is nothing odd about having a female president. There's nothing odd about having a female governor or seeing your mother vie, you know. Uh, so we're going to take uh, one uh, uh, a response about uh, what motivates you. Uh, what motivated me is uh, myself. I motivated myself first because I believe in myself. And then uh, my family motivated me. And my community also motivated me in a way that uh, you... I had said that I'll not vie again. Then uh, everyone just... The rumor spread, eh? and then I was like, every time phone call, apana niwe tunataka, apana niwe tunataka, you see? So such people, they're all over. They were all over telling me that uh, we want you back, we want you back, it's you that we want. So I found a lot of motivation from my community, my friends, and um, also me myself, I motivated myself and said, okay, since uh, they still need me, I think I should still go. Yes, we can. It happened because the 2017 election, I won but we were rigged off. Everyone knows that in Kenya. And uh, it was a very bad thing to me, as Dr. Tari said, that uh, depression is real. I was so depressed by that time. And uh, I thought that I should not go again. So the motivation came from the people themselves. They keep on motivating, you know, you are the best, you can. It's you, we believed in you. And we know that you can become our leader. And that's what motivated me. And I just gave myself that uh, strength of a woman mm -hmm. that yes i can let me go back mm -hmm. and still i'll go back in 2027 as i said before earlier on we had mentioned how i would want you to just give us a note a final note on some of the techniques that people need to use especially people who are aspiring people who have lost we have a number of people who have lost the nominations and we're finding women who are sinking into depression people put in money into this what are some of the techniques that you can teach us you know, or you can share with us, or you can propose that can assist uh, people who maybe feel like they're stuck in a situation, you know, people who are feel like they're down and out. Mm, when women lose, or we lose in anything besides even election, the first thing that happens to us is 
okay, we enter into depression, but we also had problem with loneliness. We suddenly become very lonely because all those calls and all those people following you and stuff like that, yeah. So you are just left to yourself. So definitely the first thing that will happen is uh, we will enter into a place of denial that how did it happen like this? I did my best, yeah. And the best thing to do, of course, it takes time. The best thing is to accept it uh, and accepting is a hard thing. Uh, like in her case, accepting that I have, I have, I said in the previous uh, question answer that it is not a failure, it is a setback. Setback can happen for anybody, anybody can have a setback. But what she is and both of them, these, uh, our, my sisters are saying that we should not give up. We should be confident and have that self-esteem to fulfill your desire because or my uh, our desire because it is called self-actualization. I actualize, okay. One of the coping strategy can be that uh, it is called uh, uh, mind-body relaxation, uh, mindful activities. When things are not happening your way or the way you want, you need to have that time of meditation. It is not actually a meditation, but it is like a meditation. It is called mind-body relaxation technique. You do it because you can live moment by moment in your life. Okay? Then you need to connect with new friends and your family and have new group of people in life. Because you remember when you have lost, there is a lot of toxicity. Told you that you will not win. You see, that <laughs> blaming thing, you see, yeah, uh, you can't manage it. People have rejected you, even at home you can be told you have been rejected, yeah. But that is not rejection, okay, that's just a setback, you move on. Another thing is having your personal diary, which is very important, we call it journaling. Journaling is very important because when you journal, you write about what's going on in your thought process, what you are doing, yeah, and have also uh, some exercise, something to uh, do, like uh, go to gym, go to s swim, go do cycling. Be part of other group where you can be able to, you know, to have fun. Have fun. It is not the end of the world. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And always motivate yourself by having doing self-talk, motivate yourself, even you are in campaign, you are not in, in your personal life, self-talk, talk. when people are throwing all the dirt on you, yeah, you just make it a stepping stone, just put them and step on it and move on yeah. and talk to yourself, forget about what people are saying, even your loved ones can say, mm. you understand, yeah. don't worry about it, just, okay, it hurts us because we are human, yeah, but the thing is, make it a stepping stone, walk on it and then see a better future and mm. always actualize and have that esteem, you know, because if you stay like that, you are not going to progress, you are going to regress. Okay. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Omote. I genuinely cannot add anything else. Uh, I hope that you, can, you have been able to take down the techniques that she has advised us on or suggested. We will be posting them on our social media pages. This is uh, the Dada's KBC. I would also like to appeal to our audience and our viewers at home to practice mindfulness and empathy during this period. You know, it, it does not take a lot to offer an encouraging word, a word of support to your fellow sister. She could be from a different party, she could be from a different eth ethnicity, she could have won, she could have lost. Either way, we are all together, we are all dadas. So on behalf of the production team at KBC, our sponsors, Journalists for Human Rights, and of course our location partner, the Boma Hotel, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Dadas Show, and we will catch you next week, same time, same place. Mm -hmm. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye. Thank you.